My name is Kathy Gaitan. I work for the ESL department as an assessment specialist. Um, I would say in our district, we've seen a real shift in language groups that we've been uh, serving. Continually, Spanish seems to be the by far uh, the largest population that we serve. However, we've really seen a big growth in Somali and Mai Mai speakers. I've been with the district in this capacity for five years and have seen that population grow from nearly nothing to represent now th the uh, third largest group that we serve. Um, and contrary to that, our Russian population has been uh, dwindling for a variety of reasons. One thing that I see that people have problems with uh, dealing with students who are English language learners who may be struggling and may need to receive, be identified for um, special education is that a real under, not lack of understanding about what is supposed to happen and what does pre-referral mean. Pre-referral really consists of three things. You want to get a language assessment, you want to do a data collection uh, for historical uh, and academic history and to, uh, um, to identify what interventions that you are giving the student prior to moving on to the referral stage. For the language assessment, what we give is the Woodcock Manuals for the English side for all students and we give the Spanish side for students who are Spanish speakers. We try to give some other language sample for speakers of languages other than Spanish. The reason we would do this, uh, first of all, for English is that we want to have a, normative a current normative assessment of the student's English. That way that can tell the whoever's doing further assessments in English whether this, the student speaks English or understands English well enough to interpret those test results that are uh, normed on English-only speakers. We also want to um, have a language sample of their L1 so you know if indeed they have a strong L1 or a weak L1, what it might be, and do have a comparative uh, so that if they are weak in, let's say for example, listening both in English and in Spanish, then that would really say something. But if they're strong in both languages or they're stronger in English than in Spanish, that's all important information. Then what we would do for the data collection period is we're, we're looking at academic history, which could be similar or very, very dissimilar to English-speaking students in the United States. For example, with our African population, many of them are coming from camps who uh, maybe they're coming, some of them we've seen come in as ninth graders for high school and they have never set foot in a school room ever. 